Labour, new strategy, new slogan, don't vote Labour. That, <laughs> that's the slogan. So this is the, uh, the first link here, if we get it up, which is uh, the Norfolk Labour Party website. This site, like the rest of Labour, is not working anymore. And then if you scroll down on this, they say, uh, vote Green Party. The Labour Party under Starmer is finished. He lied to get elected leader and is backtracking on all pledges he gave at the time. He can't be trusted any more than Johnson can. I mean, so this isn't the official Labour Party site for mid-Norfolk? Uh, this is. This is, so what, has it been hacked? Yeah, so apparently someone who was inside the party who ran the whole thing was just like, well, I'm leaving and also I'm going to take the website down with me. Oh, it's like the, the fat guy in Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. So we go to the next one. This is the uh, reporting on it. And in here they have uh, Michael Rosen, the chair of Mid-Norfolk Labour Party, who said, this site is currently under the control of somebody who is not a member of the Labour Party anymore. We are, <laughs> we are working hard to get this domain name back under the control of the Labour Party. We will be setting up our own Mid-Norfolk Labour Party site once we've done that. What we don't want is two sites that confuse people. Oh, I, like, I love this, with the confused people. Like, this site isn't confusing people. And this shows like, how, how diligent and rigorous Labour's attitude to business continuity and actually running the country would be if they don't even have control of their own website. How are they going to run a, a massive modern Western country's infrastructure? You'd think they'd have like some procedures in place. I mean, you'd, like, Yeah, you'd think basic when procedures. I, when I was with UKIP, they had procedures in place for even like Facebook pages. Yeah. Never mind the website for the whole region. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, absolute joke. Anyway, so he says uh, he said that the former member was one among a number of people who have recently chosen to leave the party because they are bleeding members like there's no tomorrow. Mr. Rousen said he absolutely wanted to state his disagreement with the message on the website. I thought you'd agree with it, but okay. <laughs> like, he says, uh, we actually think that Labour's on a really positive trajectory, he said. Um, really, though? Who believes this? Well, I, I kind of, I kind of believe it. I mean, Keir Starmer's a sort of more of a return to the to the centrist uh, Chad era, <laughs> the centrist era of uh, of uh, you know the the Blair and Brown years, which uh, you know for all the people, who say, oh Tony Blair's terrible. He's a war. He's not really a war criminal. He went into into a, a war with uh, with America. Um, so he was led in by them. Uh, he was just preserving the special relationship. He didn't know that you know there's going to be a million and a half people killed. Uh, he thought it was going to be a good war, uh, but it wasn't. <laughs> well, no one was going to. So, die. and everybody judges him on that. They, they forget about all the other stuff, like the the fantastic local amenities and play parks that he set up. Their uh, their their great approach to criminal intelligence. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think Tony Blair, um, as as a sort of ideological heart of the the Labour Party, is somebody and an ideology that people will vote for. It's it's like a sort of technocratic, pragmatic, centrist Labour Party, and that's what Keir Starmer represents. Whereas uh, Jeremy Corbyn is just like nobody's nobody's voting for like mad con communist garden gnome guy. I mean, I agree with that last sentence. The rest of that, I could not disagree with more. Yeah. On, uh, I couldn't even care about what he did in Iraq, quite frankly, because it's just like, well, okay. I, I, like it, I like it for you. What he just did like, to yeah. this country is what I can't stand. What did he do to this country? Oh, there's a few bad things. Like devolution was bad. The immigration reform. I, mean, no, I think you know this country needed a lot of immigration. Hundreds of thousands for years. Our economy no did stop, pretty well. I mean, no all cap. right, there could have been more done to ameliorate the impact and like maybe maybe um, even the impact across social classes. But, um, the diversity industry. Yeah, that stuff. That stuff is terrible. That's I don't think you, I don't think you blame labour entirely for that. I, oh, I, I blame them. I blame them for the expansion of the public sector, uh, particularly under Brown when he basically wanted to buy votes. But um, but no, they, they did. I mean, the, the only area of pu the public sector I've got actual expertise in is criminal intelligence, and the national intelligence model that was brought through under New Labour is fantastic. It's just unequaled. So that's that's your experience of the thing, which that's, is, well, that, that side of it went well. From a technocratic point of view, that <laughs> one little okay. sliver of public policy is uh, is is amazing. I I okay. I have no idea about that specific sliver of public policy, but I I can't stand a lot of the reforms he did uh, the, and and the effects we are suffering. Since. I mean, devolution but was anyway. bad. Faith schools were bad. A lot of other stuff was good. This isn't a debate about Tony. It was Blair. happy days, and, and so, there's great music in the charts. But anyway, he's uh, he's gone either way, yeah. regardless of whether or not you you hate him or, or think he did some good. Yeah. And uh, we're looking at the Labour Party as it is, which is. Him saying here, the example of this chap saying, it's on an upward tra 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 trajectory or something. And it's like, right, okay, so let's just take a look at what the Labour Party's been up to recently. <laughs> and uh, the first thing we have is uh, denying genocides. Okay, I mean, we're back to the Corbynite era, I guess. Except yeah. this time, not about the Jews. Of course, it's about... Uh, hey, there's Jeff Norcott. 
yes, who is just sitting in the corner silently being like, what the f*** am I watching? And I don't know if you've seen this clip, but you might enjoy it. So you see LBC, do you believe they committed a genocide? They're trying to ask the Labour MP, and the Labour MP, not so... Not so interested in answering well, that question. In fairness, there is uh, a lot of debate. Uh, America's come out and accused China of genocide, but I think uh, a lot of countries, it, there's some debate as to whether their treatment of the Uyghur Muslims actually reaches the threshold of genocide, because they certainly don't have the well, industrialised slaughter. If, even if it's not, if, if it's not what it is, this wouldn't be the first genocide either of the CCP. I mean, there have been like yeah. six or seven they've done yeah, throughout yeah. the history. So I thought we'd enjoy the, the response here from this chap. So the first one here is him saying that the conservative says that there are Chinese tentacles throughout the world. That's a racist statement. You shouldn't be allowed to make that statement. What? So let's play the first clip. Things can be said which accidentally have a, uh, a damaging impact. When he was saying that you know China has tentacles all over, you know, thirty percent of students on campuses and the rest of it, I think we've got to be very careful that where our government has disagreements with the government of China, that this doesn't end up uh, fueling uh, anti-Chinese racism in our society. Man, uh, people, it's not what it's not, about. But that's, people, that, but people, and that's the Chinese government. That's what they'd like you to believe. This is not about being anti-China. This is not an argument I, I'm with China. It's I'm, an argument I'm, I'm with the saying, Chinese Communist Party government. I, I, I'm saying, Don't fall into wrong. their trap, Richard. That's I'm, their I'm, narrative. Th th there is an increased instance of racism faced by Chinese people in Britain, for example, in relation to, uh, in relation to COVID. Uh, and, we've got to, and we've got to guard against that. That pudding faced moron. Oh my God, I hate how the left always, the first thing they do to try and shut down any any criticism or any debate or any questions is, oh, that's racist, that's racist. Criticizing the, the, the Chinese Communist Party is racist now. Yes. Even though China is now the world colonizer. You want to talk about, you know, the UK, yes. white colonization? <laughs> what? Like the CCP. <laughs> oh no. We, we wouldn't want to cause racism, would we, CCP? It's like minority yeah. get in the camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how come, how come Labour, Labour stick up for uh. Muslims in Rotherham and Rochdale and try and cover up their, their systemic abuses there? But when there's actual Muslims, they're the victims, like, like the Uyghur Muslims in China, they're absolutely happy to throw them under the bus because oh, any criticism of the Chinese Communist Party is racist. So, oh my God, absolutely pathetic. Honestly, but, I'm, like, I'm never voting Labour again. But honestly, it's, it, you know, it is pathetic and it is the usual stock rhetoric from the Labour Party that X is racist, therefore yeah. stop conversation. However, it is also stock rhetoric from the CCP because they have seen this as a weakness in the West yeah. and in response to, say, the China virus, as Trump called it, because the CCP alleged that the virus came from the US. Yeah. So he was like, no, I'll call it the China virus to make sure people know it came from China. Yeah. They were like, no, 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 that's racist. And the Dems all brought into that narrative. Hmm. And you saw them all tweeting at the time and demanding that he was a racist for saying these things. Yeah. And the same thing from Richard Bergen here. How dare you say that the CCP is trying to have its tentacles into all of our institutions. Yeah. That's racist against Chinese people. And how on earth can it be racist? Like, nobody's saying that Chinese people have tentacles. I mean... <laughs> Except Richard is, Bergen, but... I, I've, never, I've never heard that racial stereotype in my life. Yeah. Oh, you, uh, you know, there's, uh, oh, there's bloody tentacle owners. Yeah. That is absolute nonsense. I mean, it's the, not... the stereotype about Chinese is eating the tentacles, but, I mean, they do anyway, so it's not even a stereotype. Well, the, so. I mean, the, the, on, a serious, on a serious note, I mean, China is, uh, is really uh, stepping up its, its colonization, especially in Africa. Mm. So they, they use debt traps. They loan, like, so Uganda's going to lose its only international airport. So they, they lend... Uh, Uganda all this money uh, and obviously you know a lot of Ch African countries have got um, you know despotic kleptocratic leaders who then you know manage to siphon off all the money and they're corrupt so the the work that China's paid for doesn't get done the bridges or whatever uh, the factories the roads don't get built uh, so then China says well we gave you the the money to do all this stuff you haven't done it so we're taking your airport and that's China's way of yep. a land grab did the same in Sri Lanka with the port there because they needed a port in that region yeah but what's interesting is you can see here Richard Bergen essentially a bought and paid uh, agent of the CCP yeah. in effect. As you can see, de facto, he is out there on the mainstream defending the Chinese from any slight criticism I mean, even just saying that they're trying to infiltrate the West yeah. is no, 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 that's racist. And this, but let's anyway, remember this in 10 point. years' time because that's he's basically defending Hitler. Yes, so we'll go to the next clip in which he also tries to play the Noam Chomsky game of uh, how do you blame whatever's happened on America <sighs> within three steps or less. Let's go to the next one. Uh, what I'd say more widely is, look, 
There's things that the uh, government of the United States has done historically, which we profoundly disagree with, you know, invading other countries, using a nuclear bomb. Not committing genocide uh, against uh, millions of their own people, not responsible for the deaths of a million Chinese citizens who happen to be uh, Tibetan. This we, is we, on we, we, we need, different scale. I think we Let's need... not try and call out, call them in the same terms as, uh, as America. Uh, I, you know, I was referring to the, the only use uh, of a nuclear weapon uh, in war against civilian populations and the in, invasion in and, and in peace in peacetime the Chinese and, and, and the invasion and, and, and the invasion uh, of uh, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, so many countries. I don't really agree just to draw the, comparisons Richard, between the United completely States different. and the, 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 the point the point I want to make, however, everything you've said. You could say in the States, you couldn't say in uh, in China, anything I've said. The, the point I want to make is that, of course, we need our government to speak up for human rights around the world. Of course, we need our government to speak, including to its ally, allies, like Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, about the human rights abuses there. But I think we need to avoid a rush into a new Cold War, because uh, Cold Wars can become proxy wars, hot wars, uh, that's not in the interest of anybody. And of course, our government will have disagreements with the government of China. But when it comes to climate change, for example, we do need to be working with uh, China in relation to averting climate catastrophe. And you look, for example, at the huge refugee crises that are going to be caused um, <laughs> because of climate catastrophe. There's going to be a need for more international cooperation when it comes to climate change, when it comes to the flow of refugees and a whole host of other issues, diminishing resources. And that means <clears throat> working with governments in other countries who we have profound disagreements with. I no, I wanted to play the full things in this because I didn't want to edit it up so people get the reality, which is it is as bad as I'm saying, which is you can see him there. Firstly, trying to blame the United States as being as bad as China. Yeah. Because uh, Chinese may genocide their own people, but the United States did bomb Japan with yeah. nukes. It's like, and saved, million, saved potentially, you know, tens of thousands of lives, hundreds of thousands of lives, definitely uh, tens of thousands of American troops' lives. Yeah. Uh, and to, to stop, a, you know, absolutely despotic regime. The, the debate around whether or not the nukes are justified is silly, but even then... Yeah, because we had the, the firebombing of Dresden, when, you know, we bombed other cities. Don't start a war if you can't finish it. Yeah. And the Americans finished it. Yeah. And the, the other point he tries to make, which is just like, hey, well, um, the CCP... We need to be nice to them and not criticize them because climate change. It's like, <laughs> right, okay, genocide or climate change. Ah, I don't know what to do. Well, we'll yeah. let the people die. Screw them. You know, yeah. we'll have to focus on the climate change. Yeah, I'm history like, is going to judge him very poorly, and uh, and I don't think anybody's going to vote Labour again. There's not there's not going to be a Labour government for uh, I can't ever see one happening again. It's going to get played in five years when we yeah when we get the Starmerites in in power. But uh, anyway, but I just I love the point. It was just like, yeah, okay, we're literally genociding people, but that's on the back of the bus because climate change. Mm. So, like, dude, get your priorities right. Anyway, so let's go to the next one in which he says that China has emissions or something. Let's go to the next one. In, in your answer there, I haven't heard one single condemnation of, of anything the Chinese government has done. Or in, incl doing. Including on the environment. 29% of greenhouse gases are produced by, by China. That's the conservative. Who cares? The hell's wrong I with you? What kind of argument is that? He goes on to wither on about climate change. But again, like the dude is denying genocide. And you're like, yes, well, uh, they do commit. Uh, emissions as well. It's like, <laughs> dude, are you paying attention to the conversation you're having? Like, focus on the fact that he's talking about genocide yeah. and it's just like, no, I'm not going to talk about that. That, cool. that shows how the wokists have sort of distorted oh. uh, the balance of morality. So carbon emissions are seen as worse than genocide. Even the conservative. Even the conservative yeah, MP is yeah, like, yeah, yeah well, yeah. carbon emissions, you've got a fair point, Labour. We'll talk yeah, about that yeah. genocide, not so much. Yeah. Anyway, but he does get back on that and we'll, we'll play the last clip here. Action is needed uh, from China uh, and from the United States and from the UK on climate change. However, there is a line which is incorrect that somehow people believe that per head of the population in China, their carbon footprint is greater than ours. That's not true. The debate? average person in China has a smaller. Stop defending. I'm not. I'm not uh, we, we, the wrong we need, way on climate change. We, we need change. to have a sensible discussion about these things. China is a superpower. Of course, there'll be things on which we profoundly uh, disagree with them. Of course, our government has to uh, hold its allies and other countries to account on human rights abuses, and those discussions need to take place. Do you believe they've but, committed genocide? But, so do, you, do you believe they've committed genocide? The approach you're taking... Is to is ask not, you it, if you believe they've no, committed the, genocide. No, the, appro the approach that you're taking... The approach that you're taking... 
uh, is it's a straight question. You, you know, you, you, you're, try, you're trying to uh, basically create a political storm. No, I'm. You, let me speak you, if you that's agree okay. With the House let, let, let me speak. That genocide okay. has been committed by the Chinese. I'm saying probably. that our government needs to hold other governments around the world, yes, including China, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, to account on human rights abuses. But, why, but we inevitably we need why, we why need why a relationship. Why do, you, committed why, genocide. why do you find it so difficult to utter one word of condemnation about anything to yeah. do with China? I, I find it astonishing. I mean, it's unreal. It really is as if he is being paid by the Chinese Communist Party to defend the Chinese Communist Party and spe spread mistruths and, and lies about them to make them look better. I mean, I mean that's the only a... possible. If you can't, like, just sit there and say, like, yeah, yeah, they've like they've they've got this this systemic torture and repression of Uyghur Muslims of the, their own people. Like, why? I mean, it's something that, like, if it happened in the... Can you imagine? Can you imagine if it happened in Britain? How outraged, how insanely... Even, even if it happened in a fractional manner. If, if it was just, you know, the, the cultural side of it. You know, the, the culture being erased like, in schools. You know, the uh, government's currently complaining because people will point out that you're wearing a hijab. Yeah. They'll be like, well, that's Islamophobia. You need to tap down on that. Yeah. Okay, how about being put in prison camps? Yeah, how about being sterilized, being raped, being brutalized, being being forced to work as a slave for companies that, that actually pay, so Nike pay the Chinese government uh, uh, for, for cheap labor and the Chinese government uses Uyghur Muslim slaves. Like if we're talking about Black Lives Matter and how slavery <laughs> 400 lives years don't. ago that's, was That's bad. for sure. <laughs> like, geez, like, why, why aren't we talking uh, about how, why, how the slavery that's happening right now is bad? I know, I know, it's just unreal. Like, if he's not getting paid to do it, I don't know why he's doing it. Again, okay, maybe he's just a communist, and he's like, you know, comrades of the world. But the, the but Chinese the Chinese Communist Party is quite smart with its uh, with its uh, propaganda. So they, they pay YouTubers and they pay. Um, MPs. Yeah, so they, they, I mean, <laughs> uh, if if you're God, watching uh, Xi Jinping, uh, you know, we we're open to bribes. But you know, they. <laughs> we're not. I am. I am. Uh, if you want me to come back on next week and talk about the glorious wonder of the Chinese <laughs> Communist Party, man, just I'll send you my PayPal. Like just deposit uh, some, uh, like some read shadow legends or some yuan or whatever anyway, is in there we're, anyway we're almost out of time yeah. so i need oh, to yeah. speed through this which is uh, so the next thing to mention is just of course this isn't the first time either as the interview with china and censored showed that uh, carl did with them uh this is like the the sixth or genocide they're on at this point and big shook I mean, every time communists get the power, they've genocided almost everyone yeah. and a lot of ethnic minorities. And if yeah. we carry on, we go to uh, some other stuff I wanted to mention. So Andrew Neil can't get into the whole drama with Andrew Neil right now because God knows he's getting sued about that. So don't say anything stupid. But uh, the thing he said here, which I found interesting, he said, I've had my third jab, all Pfizer, and I strongly recommend everybody to do the same. I've also seen how well the vaccine passports work. I don't believe in mandatory vaccination, but if you don't get jabbed, you need to realize there are consequences on where you can go. Like, fantastic just promoting vaccine passports that's that's very lovely very well, british i, I mean just, even, even keir starmer said it wasn't british it's i like, just i just want to say that i met andrew neil at the spectators parliamentarian of the year awards and uh, he said he watched my videos and I th he was a very cool. nice man so i think he's great i think <laughs> him he's great and also I, I agree with them that vaccines should be mandatory and also the chinese <laughs> communist party is a force for good <laughs> radio anyway but i just wanted to compare this because you've got people you know promoting vaccine passports at this point we just look at the the status we have already so we don't even have mass mandates in this country it's not a mandate that you are forced to do yeah. so if we go to the next one we have uh, some footage in which the police are enforcing it what do you mean because it's not enforced that's the point in this country, you are advised to wear masks, but you don't have to. Yeah. And uh, if you do go into a shop and they say you need to, you can just say, well, you can't ask that question. Yeah. And that's the end of the legal conversation. Yeah, I've never had a problem uh, saying I'm exempt, uh, yeah. apart from when I was on a Ryanair flight. Um, well, when I was checking in, for, not checking in, but um, at the, the gate for the Ryanair flight, and they said I had to have a letter from my doctor. And I didn't have a letter from my doctor. But yes, they just made it up. I that's, think I think the they yeah they've they've got that in their terms and conditions. I think flights it's not are, legally enforceable. Yeah, but it's it's a flight, so they can remove you from the flight if you don't meet their terms and conditions. My understanding is that's still not legally enforceable because it would violate the Equality Act, even if they've read it in their terms and conditions. Yeah, but it's uh, so it's anyway, a, airli not, airlines are different. Let's not get into that debate. You may be right, and, I am uh, right. but we'll play this clip just to right. see what happened. Not exempt. Right. I'm exempt, so I don't need a mask. So, you're me you're so mind your business. Yeah, mind okay. your business. You don't need to ask so me I'm do. if I'm exempt. 
it's, it's your attitude. No, you don't need to ask me. It's, your it's not your business. What I'm going to do with you now, yeah, I'm going to ask you why you're exempt. In, in terms you don't of, need to worry. It's my medical right, history. I'm not asking fine, your medical history. So don't worry. No, you won't. No, you won't. I'll be going. No, you won't. You don't even have your mask on properly. Look at this guy. He's got his nose on and he's trying to tell me to wear a mask right, boarding a subway when I'm exempt to... for right, asthma. So right, mind listen, your business. Listen to me. And let me go on my journey. Right, stay there. Right, I'm detaining you. You're detaining me for not wearing a mask. You weren't even wearing a mask in the first place. So at the minute, right, you're under arrest. Under arrest for not wearing a mask. Under arrest for wearing a mask. Have you heard this? Under arrest for not wearing a mask, even though that's not the law. That's disgusting. That is disgusting. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So that's that's. You wouldn't see that in the glorious, wondrous state of the Chinese Communist Party. I just checked my PayPal balance. Are you doing a gig at this point? (laughs) 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 This is what you could get for only five (laughs) dollars. Anyway, I just want to mention as well, Crime Bodge's video is a backup because I know he disappeared for a while. People who don't know Crime Bodge, he specializes in suing the police for when they do things that are illegal. And whoever that is, I would recommend getting in contact with Crime Bodge because he's a great guy. And also, if you haven't watched his videos, go and check them out because they're up. Yeah, but it's disgusting on. that the the police were like, because they, 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 they again the, guy, the, the police dude even, even wasn't wearing the mask. Yeah, he wasn't wearing the mask himself. And also, they said, oh, but it's your attitude. You know what I mean? Also, that's, what that's attitudes? A crime. Attitudes a, are a crime now. Fucking boys. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> anyway. Supposed to police with consent. And also, there's real criminals out there. How come when my car gets broken into two and a half grand of camera gear gets nicked, the police couldn't care less? Well, the robber was very polite. He didn't, oh, he, didn't, he didn't misgender me, and he was wearing a mask. Well, he said, Actually, he, was, he probably was wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on there, I wanted to mention some other stuff. So, I mean, Andrew Neil promoting uh, vaccine passports. We have an example of what the reality on the ground is. And then we have an example of the Labour Party's response to the situation. This is so funny. So I wanted to remind people of this. Remember this? And uh, this is uh, a Labour Party MP saying she feels very unsafe being around people with no masks. Let's play the clip. I feel I feel incredibly unsafe in the chamber when Do I'm you? sitting there wearing a mask and I look across the benches and I see Julia. most of the Tories not wearing masks. It makes me feel unsafe. But, but it makes my colleagues unsafe. Conference when no one was wearing but a mask. It, they should have worn masks. But, if but, but Labour Party, do you feel, did you feel unsafe sitting at the Labour Party conference? I'm sitting going in the chamber, parties, which can be very packed. Not wearing masks. I, can, I, can, I can sit in the chamber wearing a mask and I look across and I see hundreds of MPs not wearing masks. There are vulnerable MPs mm. also sitting there and I think it's a dangerous message to to the rest of the country. And is it about a message? Because, I mean, Julia's point, Julia's point anecdotally, but Julia's point that people were, Labour MPs weren't wearing them at a party conference, should they have been? I think when we look at the case right now, <laughs> when we look at the issues in Parliament, when we look at the messaging that's coming out of the Speaker's office, this is dangerous to other people's public health. I think MPs should be wearing it in the chamber and around the estate as Why well. Why are you wearing one now? Right. Well, ha- because we're in the studio, we're socially distanced. Now it's, now it's safe. Have you, you seen how claustrophobic he can get in there? In, uh, right. Well, ha- 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 when you're squished next to your hang on, MPs, ha- it's hang on, you two. Hang on. It is ideological. Hang on. Let me just let me just come back. Pathetic. Yeah, I, I mean, mean that's that's pathetic. Just exposed there, but uh, exposed again because uh, what's she been up to? So this is her. I think this what is it? Yesterday. So Yesterday. she's posted her own like hypocrisy online yep. for everyone to see. This is her at the Mobo Awards, in which she's hanging out with hordes of people. Very, very close. Very claustrophobic, her words. Yeah. No masks from any of these people. Yeah. And the tr- the, the anxiety they must have caused her unbearable. But uh, yeah, she still stayed there for the whole night. Getting yeah, drunk. of seems, course. Seems to look uh, quite happy there. Yeah, I also hate like you can see in the clip where she's trying to be serious, trying to make you take her seriously. She like stares at you and she's like, doesn't make me take you any more seriously. It just shows that you're lying. Yeah. And you think you can get away with it. <laughs> and it just shows it is completely ideological and it's all theater and it's all to she score political points. She even says it in that clip. And she's yeah, she's like, asked, is it ideological? ideological? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a stupid noise. It's like, it's anyway. the same with all the, the you know, people who say, like, oh, oh, I saw, I saw a racism. I feel so unsafe. Oh, it's so damaged me. You know what I mean? And then like, you know, it turns out in their WhatsApp messages, they've been racist as well. Yeah, so vote Labour. I think not. I think I will mention the last link on this and then we'll, we'll save the rest for another time so we go to the next one we just have the fact that these MOBA awards never heard of them so if we go to this one it's just them celebrating uh, I've black, heard of them black excellence I've heard of them because I'm young and cool right it's the music of black origin awards right which is most music to be fair okay <laughs> but also on their website they have an endorsement by Jeremy Corbyn so I'm just like ah big shock oh, also, oh that famous black guy also, Jeremy Corbyn also endorsed by YouTube so again the, the oppressed <laughs> minority here <laughs> who are endorsed by the powers that be okay but yeah. we'll end that there if you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site. We've got loads on there and it's all really, really good. For example, we have regular premium articles that 
discuss contemporary events and we have a, an audio track for our silver and gold tier members. And of course, we have our regular series on there. We've got Contemplations, which is Josh and whoever he wants to have talk to him about a particular topic. On this one, he's talking about Bo, uh, talking to Bo, sorry, about in-group preference. Moving on. Uh, Bo and myself also do the Epoch series, which says talking about history. This one's Belisarius part three, because uh, Belisarius was a sixth century Byzantine general, and he had an amazing career and a tragic, a genuinely tragic end. And the, the myth of him is old blind Belisarius begging on the streets of Rome would have been better than what happened to him, but I won't spoil it. I'll let you figure out. Uh, I'll let you find out. And of course, uh, we do our regular book club as well this week or this month. So I don't know how often we do them actually. Fairly regularly. It takes a while to read a book. But this is Callum doing John Stuart Mill's On Liberty, in which I rail against utilitarianism. I used to be a huge fan of John Stuart Mill, like five, ten years ago. Uh, and since then, I've really soured on uh, utilitarianism. And so the framing of his arguments, I find kind of insufferable. He's not wrong in the, what he's arguing for, but it's the way he's doing it. But uh, anyway, we also do a bunch of premium podcasts, uh, things that are entertaining, we think, like the politics of Star Trek that I did with John, uh, talking about, well, is Star Trek a socialist paradise or not? It turns out it's not, but it's, you know, it's something different post-scarcity liberalism, basically. But that's a really good podcast. And uh, we also have to put up things on the website that we can't actually put on YouTube because YouTube has editorial policies about things such as where all these heart attacks are coming from. Giant elephant in the room. It's probably climate change. Don't worry about it. Uh, we also have fascinating interviews from really interesting people, uh, such as this one, uh, which is an activist called Luke Avery, who's a Christian, but don't worry, he's not bible thumping in this. What he's doing is talking about the ancient wisdom in the biblical book of Proverbs, and it's very much daddish sort of stuff, and I really enjoyed doing this one. And uh, I think I'll have him back in, hopefully, to uh, do another one, Ecclesiastes or something, and uh, hopefully we'll do another one soon. And if you want to keep up with us, you can follow us on getter.com. I love the, the phrase, get her, get her doing, something like that, I don't know. You're doing <laughs> really well on there, though, aren't you? You've got like 11,000 followers. It's yeah, so come follow me on Getter, come follow yeah. you on Getter. Yeah. And, and uh, lotuses.com on Getter. Lotus is underscore com on there. Let's go check that out. And also the conference itself. So this is a conference yeah. being put on by uh the Getter guys. This is on the December the eighth. <laughs> so update on this. The Getter conference has been postponed until further notice. We all let people know as soon as we have more information. Apparently it was postponed thanks to the global freakout in response to the Omicron variant. So sorry about that. So if you'd like to get access to all that premium content, you can subscribe at lotuseaters.com. Thank you and goodbye.